Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover when to flip the inequality sign when solving inequalities. We flip the inequality sign when we multiply or divide both sides by a negative number. So you'll see exactly what I mean as we go through our examples. Now when we solve these, we need to isolate the variable, which means get it by itself, by using the inverse or opposite operation. And remember, keep everything balanced. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we have four examples here. Three of them we're going to need to flip the inequality sign, and one we will not. So let's jump into number one, where we have negative two times x is greater than or equal to eight. And I'm actually going to do this one incorrectly in order to show you why we flip the inequality sign. So negative two times x greater than or equal to eight. So we're multiplying x by negative two. The opposite of multiplying by negative two is going to be dividing by negative two. That's going to isolate our x because those negative twos are going to cancel out. So whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. So x is now isolated and I'm not going to flip my sign. We should flip the sign because we divided both sides by a negative, but let's see what happens. So x is greater than or equal to negative four. So in this case, x has to be greater than or equal to negative four to be a solution. So let's test something out, a number greater than or equal to negative four. Let's try two. So let's plug two in. So negative two times a positive two is negative four. Bring our sign down and we have negative four is greater than or equal to eight which is not true. Negative four is not greater than or equal to eight. So not flipping the sign actually gives us the opposite of what we want. It's going to give us incorrect solutions. So let's flip the sign and see what happens. I'll rewrite the problem here. So we need to divide both sides by negative two. So the same thing we did earlier. But since we divided both sides by a negative, we have x isolated, and we need to flip the sign in order to make the inequality true. Eight divided by negative two is negative four. So we actually have x is less than or equal to negative four. So let's try one of those solutions out. Let's try negative five. And I'm running out of room, so I'll try underneath here. So negative two times negative five is greater than or equal to eight. Negative two times negative five gives us a positive 10, and 10 is greater than or equal to eight. So negative five would be a solution along with anything else that is less than or equal to negative four. So this was incorrect because we did not flip our sign, and this was the correct solution. So let's do a few more examples. Jump into number two here, where we have n divided by three is less than negative seven. So we are dividing by a positive three. So the opposite would be multiplying by a positive three. So let's multiply both sides by a positive three. So we don't need to flip the sign in this inequality because these were positive numbers that we multiplied both sides by. So the threes cancel out on the left and leave us with n. n is less than negative seven times three is negative 21. So anything less than negative 21 is going to be a solution for that inequality. Let's plug something in. Um, that will be pretty easy to work with there and a compatible number with three. So let's do negative 30. That's less than negative 21. So if we plug in negative 30 divided by three is less than negative seven. Well, negative 30 divided by three is negative 10. I'm going to squeeze it in down here. Negative 10 is less than negative seven. That's true. So negative 30 was a solution along with anything else that's less than negative 21. Again, we did not need to flip the sign because we multiplied both sides by a positive number. 
So let's move on to number three, where we have w divided by negative seven is greater than or equal to five. So we're dividing by negative seven as far as that variable goes, the w. So we need to isolate that by doing the opposite of dividing by negative seven. So that would be multiplying by negative seven. So let's multiply both sides by negative seven. And we end up with an isolated w and since we multiplied both sides by a negative, we need to flip the sign. A positive 5 times a negative 7 is negative 35. So w is less than or equal to negative 35. So let's test a solution out. Let's do negative 42 because that's less than negative 35 and it's going to be compatible with dividing by negative seven. So let's use negative 42 divided by negative seven is greater than or equal to five. So negative 42 divided by negative seven is going to give us a positive six, which is greater than five. So this is our answer to number three. And anything less than or equal to negative 35 is going to be a solution for w. Lastly, number four, we have 27 is less than negative nine times y. So we need to isolate that y. We're multiplying it by negative nine. The opposite is going to be dividing by negative nine. So let's divide both sides by negative nine. And we need to flip the sign since we divided both sides by a negative. So we end up with negative three is greater than y. So y has to be less than negative three in order for it to be a solution. So let's test something out. Let's plug in something that's less than negative three. So let's do negative five. That's less than negative three. So we have 27 is less than negative nine times negative five. So 27 is less than negative nine times negative five is 45, a positive 45. So this is true, 27 is less than 45. So negative five is a solution along with anything else that's less than negative three. So there you have it, there's when to flip the inequality sign, whenever we multiply or divide both sides by a negative. And I do have a video that further explains why we need to do this. I'll drop that link down in the description. So I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.